The tenements of New York City's Lower East Side were home to immigrants from around the world in 1881. One of those immigrants was my great-great-grandmother Carolina, who came to the United States from Hungary at the end of 1880. For her, and so many other young immigrant women, this could have been home. <laughs> Carolina starts her Saturday in a plain cotton chemise, which would be changed at least once a day. A single working-class girl like her has no use for decorated underthings. Better to spend her clothing budget on something that would be seen. The legs of the drawers were not sewn together, so the wearer didn't have to undress to use the bathroom. A few simple tucks finish the hem of each leg. It's springtime, so lighter weight cotton stockings will be warm enough for the legs and feet. In colder weather, heavier wool would be necessary to protect against the slush and snow of New York streets. Carolina's boots have a low, curved heel that she can stand, walk, or work all day in. They fasten with buttons, placed to fit the owner's feet and ankles. A button hook can speed the process up. She puts the hook through the buttonhole to grab the button and pull it back through. Carolina came from a tiny shuttle in rural Hungary, where corsets may not have been as common. In America, corsets were worn regardless of background or class, much like bras are today. A working class corset would be sturdy and simple, providing bust and back support while doing physical labor. Carolina's corset is cotton twill and would be boned with thin, flexible strips of whalebone. She laces it firmly, but not too tightly. This is the same corset she wears for work in New York's garment factories during the rest of the week. In 1881, the large back bustle was no longer in style and would not come back for another two years, but a little lift in shape under the skirt was fashionable. A smaller bustle pad like Carolina's could be made from leftover fabric and stuffed with wool, cotton, horsehair, or shredded fabric scraps that would otherwise be thrown away. Petticoats were another item worn by all classes, and could be very decorated or very plain. They kept the legs warmer, protected the dress from dirt, and were necessary for the skirts to fall stylishly. This one fastens with a drawstring at the back waist, so it can fit many sizes. A ruffle at the hem provides some structure and shape, and helps prevent the long hem from getting caught underfoot. On a Saturday morning, Carolina brings out her best dress to wear to synagogue for Shabbat services. She's saved for weeks or months for a multicolored printed cotton. The average sewing machine operator in New York City at this time earned a dollar and 24 cents a day, and most of Carolina's money would go to rent, food, and her family back in the old country. The skirt closes in the back with hooks and eyes. Since the waistband won't be seen, she's made it out of a cheaper plain cotton. Anything Carolina needs for her day can fit in the skirt pocket, hidden in one of the seams. This is Carolina's first new dress since coming to America, and she's followed American fashions as much as she can. A decorative overskirt needs extra fabric, which Carolina would consider herself lucky to afford.
She would be inspired by high fashion styles with complicated drapery and many kinds of trim, copying what she could with the materials she had. The overskirt fastens separately at the side, also with hooks and eyes. A sturdier cotton lining would reinforce the light printed fabric in the dress bodice, and very thin strips of whalebone at the seams would keep the bodice from wrinkling up. Fashionable dress bodices in the early 1880s followed the cuirass or basque style, closely fitted and extending over the hip. Three-quarter length sleeves and low square necklines were popular on high fashion dresses, but these wouldn't be modest enough for an orthodox Jewish woman like Carolina. She's made her bodice with the fashionable fitted silhouette, but a high neckline and sleeves to the wrists. The buttons have a small, subtle, six-pointed Star of David stamped into them, and the dress would be laundered carefully to avoid damaging them. What would it mean for a 19-year-old girl, a world away from everything she'd known, to put on her best dress for Shabbat? This outfit, wages saved for fabric, evening sewing after long days of work, meant success. Carolina crossed an ocean to make a home in a place that's far from perfect. She works hard and still faces prejudice against Jewish immigrants. In this dress, she fits in, another American girl in New York, but she is still who she is. At the synagogue on Shabbat morning, she will greet her new community with pride and with joy.